Hi, I'm Ben Canning. This micro lecture is on the intro to electricity. As always, you need three or more bullet points worth of notes, a one to two sentence summary, and to do your follow-up questions on Google Forms. All right, so what is electricity? Well, electricity, when we're talking about it, we usually actually mean electric current, which is the flow or movement of charge. Um, and it happens to usually be electrons, hence the word electricity and not something else. Um, while you can make uh, electricity or uh, movement of charge electric current out of some other charge carrier, it just tends to usually be electrons. Now, there are three things that we'll talk about when we talk about electric circuits. Um, we already introduced one, which is electric current, and the variable for that is I. Um, the units, or what we measured in, are amps or amperes, and that was the flow of charge is what current is. The other thing we'll talk about is voltage, and you've heard that word before somewhere. Voltage is the amount of energy per charge. So if current is how fast the charge is flowing through, voltage is how much energy is each of those electrons um, that's flowing through, how much energy is each one carrying with it, or how much can it give to whatever device you're powering. The variable for voltage is V, and we measure it in volts. Now, not everything conducts electricity very easily, and so sometimes we want to regulate how fast things are flowing. We do that with things that provide resistance. Um, so resistance is how hard it is for electricity to flow. That's not an official definition. That's just kind of our working or easy way to think about it definition. Um, the variable for resistance is R, and it's measured in ohms. We represent ohms with this upside down horseshoe looking thing called an omega symbol. So if electricity is the movement to electrons, why do electrons move? Well, before we get into that, let's talk about this. Like charges repel and opposite charges attract, just like magnets, but it is different than magnetism, so please don't confuse this. Um, with electric charges, um, we get that there is a force between them, and we'll talk more about that force when we talk about fields. Um, but for now, know that if you have positively charged things, they'll repel each other, and if you have negatively charged things, they'll repel each other. But if you have a positive and a negative, they'll attract. All right, so to help us answer why do electrons move, let's consider this scenario. We have a negatively charged sphere and a positively charged sphere, and then we plop an electron down in the middle. What direction is the electron going to move, or what direction is the force on that electron? Think about it for a second. All right, hopefully you said it was to the right, where it's being attracted by this positive sphere, because an electron is negative, but it's also being repelled by this negative sphere, since, again, negatives are two like charges repel, and opposites attract. And so we get this idea that the electron would receive a force to the right. It also, however, um, has an amount of stored energy based on its location, because if we are holding it right here, as soon as we let go, it could move. That's an idea of stored energy that we'll bring in in a little bit. Now let's consider what happens if those spheres are not quite as heavily charged, so a little bit less negative and a little bit less positive. What do you think happens to the force then? All right, hopefully you said it decreases, so this would be a um, less of a charge buildup here, so there is less force on it, and similar, less of a charge here, so there is less force on our electron. We could also say that there is less energy being stored. Since it's not going to be pushed and pulled quite as hard, uh, we have less pressure on it, and so if we let go of this, there's just less energy that it can release or deliver. So then, if we increase the charge, by that flip side, um, on each of those spheres, we are increasing the force on this electron, but we're also increasing the amount of stored energy um, that the electron has based on its position between these two spheres. We could also say that the electron has more voltage. So I'd set all of this to build us up to this idea of what is voltage. Well, it's the energy per charge. When we have more voltage, that means there is more kind of pressure or a push on an electron um, from either a negatively charged area or a positively charged area. Um, and as a result, it has more energy stored. So Going to a more um, applicable scenario, or a real-world scenario, if we imagine this battery over here, it has a negative side and a positive side. So what that means is, is that electrons are being pushed by the negative side uh, due to a buildup of negative charge um, through our circuit. You could also think of it as they're being attracted by the positive side, um, but I usually tend to think of it as pushing from the buildup of negative charge on that negative side. 
More formally, we could also say that the buildup of negative charge over here creates an electric field that pushes or pulls the electrons through the circuit. We'll talk about what an electric field is at a later date. This is a more formal way of talking about it. We're not really too concerned with that at this point. Now, electrons move um, because there is that buildup of charge, uh, as I mentioned. Um, and so that is what pushes or pulls them through the circuit. Additionally, electrons can move through certain materials more easily than others. Uh, so electrons uh, that move or that can move more freely, um, we say that material is a conductor um, versus when it can't move through material because the uh, atoms in that material tend to hold on to electrons or prevent the flow, we say that that's an insulator. Now, these two things are not binary. There's um, a whole slew of things that are in between as well. So there are things that are really great conductors and really great insulators, and then there are things that are kind of in between for all of them. So to help recap on that, conductors have electron, or allow electrons to flow easily between atoms. Um, if you've taken chemistry, it's because they have one to three valence electrons. If you haven't taken chemistry, just know that there are some loose atom or loose electrons that can flow around. Examples of this are common metals of gold, silver, copper, and aluminum. Um, insulators, uh, electrons flow between atom or electron flow between atoms is difficult. This is because they have nearly complete valence electron shells, uh, usually in the five to eight range for that. Some examples are glass, quartz, plastics, and rubber. That's it for this one. Three more bullet points worth of notes, one to two sentence summary, and do your follow-up questions on Google Forms, please.